We've heard in the last couple of days, as we've been talking about facilitating change, we've been talking about, about leading a, a, a revolution in, in fresh food. Sorry to take your line, Michael Simnetta. Um, I, I have to say that our, our next speaker and our, our final speaker for, for this part of, of Fresh Connections is someone who epitomises leading change. He's probably best described as one of, um, one of the greatest change agents that the produce industry has seen in, in you know, at least definitely in the time that, um, that our business has, um, has known him. Our next speaker has been um, with PMA in the US for 28 years and actually came to, to the US to lead the international development of, of PMA um, as it was then. For the last 15 years, he has actually led um, PMA and led PMA not just in North America, but really led it um, from, a, from a global point of view. I think that this person actually, I said he epitomises um, everything about change, but he, I think he has actually epitomises all things that, that this wonderful, amazing industry is really about. He is incredibly passionate about the industry that he's in. He, he is, um, he's flexible, he's innovative, he, he really believes in growing strong, sustainable businesses. Uh, he's a rock star, as, and as we are, all are in our, at night time. Um, he loves celebrating freshness and quality and all things, all things flavoursome. And most of all, and I think very, very authentically and sincerely, he is so passionate about his family. He is a loving, loving husband, amazing father, and I think... As, um, as passionate a grandfather that any grandfather could ever be. Please will you welcome Brian Silverman from PMA. Thank you, Brian. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> well, thank you, Felicity. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. And I want you to write all my introductions from here on out because that was absolutely amazing. Thank you. Uh, um, thanks to all of you for sticking around through the end of the conference, for your engagement, for your insight. Um, and for making fresh connections such a success. And think about it, fresh connections. What does that mean? The name calls out for innovation. Thank you, Greg, for, for using innovation, it, for calling out for things new, ways to connect the dots, to make sense of what brought us here and what we've learned together. And that's what I'm going to try and do. And as I prepared for this presentation and this trip, I asked Michael Worthington and Michael Simonetta to give me a little bit of flexibility. Let me not give you a presentation a week in advance that was kind of cut and dry, but really to try and interact with people to get insight and innovative ideas from the speakers over the last uh, 36 hours and incorporate that into what I'm going to say. And they were certainly very agreeable to that. And partly, well, because I like being different, Felicity. Uh, don't like marching to the same drummer, if I can use that metaphor, all the time. But I wanted to get your insight into this critically important issue of innovation in this industry. Now, every year at Fresh Summit for about the last six years, I give a presentation entitled State of the Industry. And some of you have heard about it, and a few of those themes will come out, including one of the things that Greg just mentioned about the baby carrots, because I think there are some lessons that go far beyond just carrots in there, but in terms of our overall marketing. And this year's State of the Industry theme is going to be about innovation. What sparks it? what sustains it, and how it gets passed along. It'll also incorporate all the senses into the story. And folks, the reason that these products are up here is because we asked for them to be left up after Maggie and Saskia were here this morning. That wasn't the original plan. But as we looked at the stage, we said, you know, this is our story. It's not folks standing up here with a slide presentation and talking about just values. It's about this stuff as well. And far too often, we forget about the product, we become too theoretical, and we really need to embody the passion of the product, the color, the variety, and everything else. And that's what I'm going to talk about uh, today. All right. Are we changing our slides? Can you change them from up there, please? Thank you very much. Innovation is not a new concept. In fact, the word can be traced back to 15th century Middle France, to the word innovation, which meant renewal or a new way of doing things. And you think about that, renewal. Is there a better word to describe the produce industry? Is there a better way to describe our industry? We renew ourselves every season. 
as we grow and we nurture, we pick and ship the flavorful fruits and vegetables you see before you here that feed and delight and nourish consumers around the world. Renewal is also a new way of doing things. Perfect words to describe the way in which we face our challenges every single day. And renewal is a key reason, I would suggest, why you all came here to this Fresh Connections. Because the spirit of renewal thrives on human interaction, on sharing, just like Greg does with his 10-year-old every Sunday, and learning. Without renewal, we stop growing the business. We stop pushing our boundaries. We stop growing our minds. And when you stop doing that, you wither and you die. Now, what a year it's been in this part of the world, in Australia and New Zealand. It's one that's been defined by courage and character and the strength of community. Your Minister of Agriculture talked about this. He talked about resilience. You've had fires and you've had floods. You've had earthquakes and cyclones and even locusts, I learned yesterday. Yet here we are again, in Brisbane this time, seeking renewal, drawn by the energy that is generated when the best innovators in this dynamic part of the world come together to share ideas and to reconnect and to imagine the future. Because folks, that's what you are doing here, is imagining the future. Never forget the future's being built right here, right through the interactions you have in workshops, in general sessions, and on the show floor that'll follow. Innovation, my friends, is the surest path to get us where we need to go. And someone once said that innovation is not the product of logical thought. Think about that. Innovation is not the product of logical thought. But it's the courage to see change as an opportunity and not a threat. Now, different people have had different perspectives of this. So this is Robert Louis Stevenson. And I can say that I agree with what he wrote a long time ago, which is, our business in life is not to succeed, but to continue to fail in good spirits. I would prefer to be a little bit more optimistic than that. But I did find some of you yesterday and the day before, in fact, when we were on the bus tour, who said the ability and the permission to fail is a hallmark of great companies and strong people. The ability and the permission to fail and to learn from that failure. Key hallmark of innovative companies. And then I listened to some of the presentations yesterday and I was reminded of the danger inherent in this cartoon. I think you can all see it. 1929, the Great Depression, apples five cents a piece, and today, organic apples five cents a piece. And it speaks to the ongoing challenge that we have, that we have to stop seeing this business as simply a commodity, one in which you change the label but don't question the value. It also speaks to a fundamental message from this conference, that as long as we continue to treat our products and we use the terminology about commodities, we'll do two things at least. Two things at least. Number one, we won't see the added value opportunity, opportunities that are driving the produce category because that's what consumers want to need. And you've heard that from a number of presenters already. I'm going to talk about it more. That's number one. But number two, perhaps even more importantly, we'll fail to see that we don't grow and market commodities, but that we are in the food business. And I take my hat off to Michael and Michael and the rest of the planning committee for this event. Because the lessons from the Master Chef Challenge the first night and from Maggie and her daughter today is that this is all about food. It is all about culture and flavors, sharing, color, artistry, nutrition. Maggie said this morning, it's about joy. Building consumption comes through building knowledge and engagement. And if we only think of our products as commodities or as just apples or just potatoes or whatever, we fail to see the greater relevance that we have. And I would say the greatest innovation that has happened at this conference is the link that the organizers have made to get you to see your product outside of the farm, outside of the store, and in the context of how consumers actually eat the product and what they need to know to make greater use of it.
I am an optimist. And boy, that's certainly been reinforced by the powerful messages here in Brisbane. So I wrote some of these down. Joe Ludwig talked about resilience. I mentioned that. Lou talked about sharing knowledge globally with produce setting the tone for the entire store. And you heard that from uh, Greg a little earlier. Rich Dockman described the value of seeing food service as a unique and impactful segment of our marketplace. And Simon George captured the criticality of people and culture coming first. Yaya talked about light bulb moments, and I sure had one. When he read the quote from Russell Davies of Nike, which I thought was brilliant, we can't target consumers anymore, they target us. Joe Cross was instilling in us his passion for seizing control of our own destiny. Martin focused on the value of information and helping close the loop between the information and what it really means. Maggie talked about food is joy, and we need to turn beautiful produce into beautiful meals. Felicity stressed that kids must come first, and Greg was looking at cooking with his son. So those were just a few of the insights that I got. But friends, I believe we have reached a tipping point in Western society's understanding of the need to change our diets, the ways to make those changes, and the willingness to change consumer behavior. Because despite the ever-present challenge that come with being part of an industry that is so dependent on Mother Nature and the ever-changing consumer demands and retailer demands, the stars are lining up for fresh produce. And just like Captain Cook and other explorers came to this part of the globe, our job now is to chart the course based on those stars. So let's look at some of those stars. All around the world, health, wellness, and taste trends point to produce. National governments have thrown their support into the fight to combat a rising obesity epidemic among our children. Just last week, you heard this already from Rich yesterday and from Greg a few minutes ago, the US government unveiled its new consumer graphic. My plate shows half of the plate dedicated to fruit and vegetables. We've been working with the government on this for more than 15 years to get a simplified graphic that people can really understand. And we, now we have it in a simple graphic showing fruit and vegetables occupying half of the plate. Think of the possibilities this extends in other markets as well. The reason I share this with you is not to suggest that you ought to have exactly the same graphic that we use in the States. But it is one of simplicity, messaging, and marketing to a new generation and a new consumer. I'm using this as an example. And for those of you who heard Morris talking about social media a little while ago this morning, I'm going to come back to that because this fits into that same model. Because what started two decades ago with detailed advice from government and health authorities on advice about counting the number of servings, which were then five to nine servings a day, and then moved to this pyramid with complex data based on logic and measurement is now a simple graphic. It's almost as though, I want you to think about this, it's an app on an iPhone. When you look at this, it almost looks like an app on an iPhone. And I want you to remember that metaphor because it's an integral part of your future as food marketers, because that's what you all are. Whether you're a potato grower, an onion grower, or a processor of salads, you are a food marketer. And consumers today are moving from a reliance on data to a focus on image and graphic representations. If you take nothing else from this presentation, please take this. The consumer marketing world of our future will be built on graphic imagery and not on detailed explanations and descriptions. So how do we capitalize on the trends and get more of our products onto the plate? Those of you who heard Rich talk yesterday know about the Food Service 2020 initiative that PMA has, has formed with the National Restaurant Association in the United States. And its goal is to double the 